My name is Jack Lundin. I'm sitting here with Torstein Sanis, who was the managing director of Lundin Norway from the year 2003 to 2015. And it's an honor to be able to be here and have a conversation with you on this Lundin Legend series because I was able to work with Torstein from 2012 to 2014. But what's amazing is that over that time period that Torstein was running as managing director at Lundin Norway, he was responsible for the discovery of close to 4 billion barrels of oil equivalent, which is a staggering number. Thank you very much for, for being here today. Thank you, Jack. And uh, I think it's fair to say that I've been in the ENP business for the last 50 years. And it all started with uh, working on uh, the rig Ocean Viking on the second well on Ecofisk which was kind of the opening thing on the NCS and the Norwegian continental shelf. And of course, that uh, particular field is still producing. And I made up my mind that uh, I was going to go into this business because it was brand new. And uh, I uh, have a kind of a background in engineering as well as geology and geophysics. And uh, I started in uh, the private company called Saga Petroleum in uh, 2000, when uh, Saga disappeared, we were four or five guys that said that uh, we're not going to continue in a major company. We we're going to try to uh, put a small company together because at the time it was only eight operators on the NCS, big companies, and they were not exploring for new stuff. They were only looking for small stuff <laughs> next to their own infrastructure. So. The government said that uh, we cannot continue like this because we need to find whatever is left before the infrastructure is uh, out of age and it's shut down. So the five of us uh, visited with everybody that had money in Oslo and uh, we put a small company together. It was owned by uh, DNO at the time and the name was the Norske Oleselskap. We were the first little company that actually got licenses on the NCS and the kind of the new scheme. And after four years uh, with the discovery as a partner of Alheim, together with uh, the operator Marathon, there was no money uh, in that particular company for the CapEx. And then came the sale to Lundin. And that was, we're now in the year 2003. We all went over and opened an office for uh, Lundin, Norway, and uh, took about 70% of the assets uh, that we had created with us, and uh, paid the old owners, and uh, it was a pretty clean break. And uh, we told the uh, Lundin family that uh, you should also hire the same people, the group that's created the small monster, and we said that then, trust us, we're will make you a big monster. We even had the guts to apply for a block and we couldn't even find one company to join us. But we felt so sure that this is where, and this was actually with Sierra High. And I remember I went to the family here in Geneva and said that we don't have any partners. We are going to apply for it and we're going to commit to drill one well. And it took uh, uh, one long dinner to haggle over that, yes, we're going to let you do that. And of course, today, that is the Grig field. You can only do this if you have the competent team. We had put together a team. We all knew each other. And we'd been in the business so long. So we knew who you could trust, who will deliver and who will create opportunities that if you have guts enough to follow them, it's a kind of what I call a industry model as compared to a lot of model that uh, you get a portfolio together, you look at the portfolio and you risk the portfolio and you drill exploration wells that are, have a meaning in respect to what you can actually find when you brought this small team together, you saw that there was an entrepreneurial family ready to make a splash in the NCS, the Norwegian continental shelf. What was your mandate and what was your vision at that time? The, the, the vision was fairly simple. Uh, 
putting a, a small company together with the best exploration people that uh, had the best track record. We made a kind of a, a strategy goals. We were not going to go for gas. It's going to be a black oil play. We were not going to be where you had high pressure or, or H2S. It's going to be in shallow water. So if you find something, you can put it on production within the next four, five, six, seven years. We said to everybody, and including the family, this is the scheme. This is what we're going to do. And uh, we also knew that all of them were coming on production we only being a partner, but that will bring some income. So we'll actually have some money to do this. And uh, we discovered uh, Grig. We introduced broad size in Norway on the NCS for the first time. It was fairly simple that, yes, we're going to drill where Grig was found because there was no question. The sands were there and we drilled it and it was okay. When you are able to define something like that, there is no question that uh, there usually it's, I don't call it geology, it's closeology. And if you do closeology, your uh, success ratio is uh, probably more than 50%. Something that's, that's quite historic and I, I could say I think never been done before with the size of the team that was responsible for making the Johann Sverdrup discovery. The, the sphere drip field was brought into production in 2019. Um, well over 500,000 barrels mm -hmm. of oil equivalent per day. We're now going to be bringing that up to 750,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Or more. Or more. Um, but this field was built in record pace. I mean, what, from discovery to mm -hmm. first production, it can often take much more than, than 10 years to build. So the beauty of this thing is that it's uh, simple. It was very simple to build out. Exactly, and I think what's what's even more impressive here is when we look at the field, Johann Sverdrup, how it stacks up the, against the other North Sea giants. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the biggest field that the entire continental shelf has seen in, what, over 10, 20 years. Yeah, and of course it was in an area that uh, everybody thought was uh, everything that's worth finding is found already. What I'm taking out of this um, is that you know there's 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 some ingredients that you need to be mm -hmm. successful in the business, and what are those ingredients to create a successful team? I, I would say that uh, it helps that you worked in the industry for forty years. <laughs> Usually, it's a kind of a threefold thing. You need to have the right supportive owners with good discussions uh, before you say this is what we're going to do on the major things. You need to have the right crew to find it in the expiration to understand that you need uh, uh, tomorrow's seismic to be able to define what you're looking for. And you need to have the right reservoir guys and you need to have what I call the right builders. I guess as a closing to this discussion, what would you say to somebody that's thinking about studying geology or engineering in either mining or oil and gas, um, and they're getting ready to start their career? What would you say they should be focusing their attention on? I, I would say that uh, uh, they should uh, learn all the basics and uh, learn that and then uh, uh, start to look at uh, uh, what companies will give you the most quick learning curve. You need to, go, to gravitate towards a company that has shown that it has the ability, it has the right ownership, and there's no question that the ESG is handled in a, in a proper manner. Torstein, thank you very much for spending some time with me today and sharing your wisdom on what it takes to create a successful business. You've got to have a vision. You've got to have a dedicated team. There's got to be continuity and a right ingredients for people that really want to make a difference.